Hello everybody and welcome to your next SFML tutorial. So we solved our problem with the input manager class in the last tutorial. So now uh, as a result your program should look something like this. Uh, so okay then so when you press to tr to transition and that's cool and everything but we don't want it just to show up on the next screen. Uh, we want it. We want to have a, a smooth transition. Now, I know a lot of you guys might have a lot of ideas for different transitions, right? You guys might want to do a fade transition. You guys might want to do like a zoom out or zoom in or something, right? There's different types of transitions you can do. Uh, for right now, our transition is going to be fading out and fading in. But the way we're going to design the animation class is that you're going to be able to easily modify the animation class, or you're going to be yeah, you're going to be able to modify the animation to uh, like the animation class is going to be like a base class for every other class, and therefore any other animation that you want to create, you can inherit from the animation class and do various things with it. So using that, we're going to be able to uh, do a lot of uh, cool things. And you don't even have to copy the same animation that I'm doing right now. It's up to you which animation you want to input. But I'm going to be inputting a fade out and fade in animation. Uh, so um, this might span maybe two, three, four tutorials. Not really sure how long, but uh, we'll see where it takes us. Uh, so I'm going to press Shift Alt C. And we're going to create a new class. And this class is going to be called um, animation. Okay. So the animation class is going to be the base class for every single animation, like I mentioned before. Uh, uh, so what we're going to have is we're going to have a lot of protected properties. And uh the for protected for those of you who don't know and you should know because you should know object oriented programming but i guess as a refresher per protected properties um if if they're inherited from another class uh then uh you can use the uh, um the values from the inherited class and the reason why i'm going to make them protected now is because um if i make them all private and another um, inherited member is going to need it in animation then we're going to have to make a bunch of get and sent methods uh which is kind of pointless because almost every animation is going to need these base things right these base items so might as well uh, make them from scratch uh, but before we start what we're going to have is we're going to have a load uh load content method and we're going to have an unload content method we're going to have an update and uh, for now we'll put nothing in there and for the draw we'll have our SF render window now I know we never include anything yet uh, so our render window is not there so let's include graphics.hpp Okay, so we've got um, those things set up, and that should work. And so, uh, these are some of the values we need now. Remember, I'm like freestyling with this, so um, I might miss some, but we will get to all of them eventually. So we need an alpha value. Uh, we also need to have, um, let's have an SF string, and we'll call that text. Uh, we also need an image. And uh, with the image, we also need to spray. If we're going to display that image, uh, we also need to have uh, a position. So let's say FSF vector 2F, and we'll call that position. Um, what else do we need? We need. We need a color for the text, so I'm going to call it text color. And um, for now, we'll we'll just leave it at that. And anything we need, uh, we'll, we'll just add to it later. So what we're going to do now is what we need to do is we need to make these virtual. 
so I'm just gonna call that virtual virtual and for the draw command uh, let's not make it virtual as of yet um, if anything then we'll make it virtual uh, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna say animation load content and am I missing something nope okay so the load content uh, should take in a few default parameters so uh, there's a few things that we need in order for uh, uh, for our stuff to work so instead instead of taking what we're gonna do is we're going to include um, uh, the string class and for our text our text is going to be um, our string right but for every single text that we write we don't want the user to have to we don't want us to have to create an SF string when I want to do and then set the text and everything the animation class should cover that so what we're gonna do is we're gonna just say um, let's say uh, pre let's say let's say pretext or whatever so the text before you put it into the SF string okay uh, so this is gonna take uh, uh, the text that we want uh, either the text we're gonna display um, an image and uh, position so let's say vector 2f position and I hope you could see the end of that okay so let's copy this right here uh, let's paste it there Okay, so we're gonna say we're gonna use this keyword, and for those of you who don't know what it means, it just means uh, uh, take. Well, actually, it just means it refers to the actual the class variable rather than the parameters uh, within our method. So we're gonna say uh, this image is equal to the image in the parameter, and this position is equal to position in the parameter. Okay, so we got that stuff set up. So for now we're gonna say alpha is equal to one, um, and let's see what are the variables we got. So we're gonna say our default text color is going to be equal to as of color, and we're gonna put uh, let's see one fourteen uh, seventy seven twenty two fifty five. I think that's the color I'm going for. I'm not really exactly sure, uh, but it's whatever. Um, for our sprite, we're gonna say sprite dot set image, and it's gonna be the image that we specify in there. And uh, the text text dot set text, I believe that's what it is. Set. I guess not. Oh, sorry. This text dot set text and we put in the text that we want to put in there see the problem we had before is that whenever if we don't use it this keyword and they have the same name then it's going to refer to the parameter rather than the actual uh, class variable so uh, we need to use this uh, keyword to actually specify what we're trying to refer to uh, so we set the text as well so that's all we're going to do for now and we're just going to uh, just use the unload content and for the unload content, we need to unload everything uh, that we we don't need anymore. Get rid of that. So as I see right now, there's nothing really um, to deallocate. I don't know if they, the sprite has a deallocation thing. I doubt it. Uh, let's see if there's a destroy. Nothing to delete or anything. Uh, so for now, uh, we'll leave this empty, and we'll add, in case I'm wrong, uh, we'll add to it later. Uh, but for the update and for the draw, shift render window. Uh, okay, so for the updates, uh, we're going to leave that blank, and for the draw command, uh, uh, this is what we're going to do. So there was something that I missed, and... Uh, want to say SF uh, we'll say int ret 
and we'll say a source rect. So that's going to be our source rectangle. So in case we ever have an animation that requires us to crop out a piece of an image or text or something like that, uh, then we're going to use um, the source rect in order to do so. Uh, so for the draw command, um, basically the draw command is going to be the same for everything, right? Uh, so we'll just say that window, uh, we can say uh, draw and we'll just draw our sprite, I guess. Or actually, what we'll say is that if our, sp if, uh, let's say, hmm. We could check. We have to check to see if the there's nothing in the text, and there's nothing. We, there's no need to draw any text to the screen, right? Uh, so we'll say pretext. I'm not sure how to check. Uh, dot get. Sorry, if text. Dot get text. Is equal to null. So if we have nothing in there. Or. Hmm, I don't know how to get it. Uh, give me a second. Okay, so as you probably noticed, I paused it and re I restarted it. Okay, so what we gotta do is we gotta make a string, and we'll say the string is equal to text uh, dot get text. And I think it's because the text is a constant um, object or something. Uh, th that's the reason why. Uh, so we're going to say that if str not equals uh, to the empty string, uh, then we want to draw the text to the screen. So we'll draw the text, and we'll say that if uh, sprite dot uh, actually, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to say if uh, sprite dot get image. Uh, not equals to null then we'll say window dot draw sprite and uh, that's gonna be it for this tutorial uh, you're not gonna be able to do anything with this yet but uh, we'll continue where we left off in the next tutorial so hope you enjoyed it thanks for watching and bye